Hey guys, how's it going? Brad Riley here and welcome to this video. And in this one today, I have a bit of a different one. This is an interview from my head coach, Michael, that was due to go on his YouTube channel last year. And for some reason, we never ended up uploading it. I think this was back like middle of last year, but it's such a valuable interview that I wanted to upload it. It's actually him interviewing me. I think this is the first time I've ever done anything like this on the channel where I've uploaded somebody interviewing me rather than the other way around. But seriously, after watching this back, I found videos before that I filmed and I've like not bothered uploading them but this video was so valuable it's probably the best interview that i've ever personally done so i highly 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 recommend you watch until the end i get super open and transparent i've speak about some things on this this video today as well that i've never spoken about before it gets into quite a deep place but honestly i, I want to share it with you all today because the value in there is absolutely crazy thanks again so much for watching michael's links to his youtube channel and everything will be down below and of course if you're interested in joining the marketing agency mentorship program the links are all in the description as well. Thanks again so much for watching and uh, let's jump into it. For the people that actually don't know you yet, um, you want to give a brief introduction to, to who you are and what you do exactly? Sure, of course, man. Yeah. Um, so as Michael mentioned, um, I'm currently Michael's mentor. Uh, we've worked together for a while now. We've been through a bunch of my you know, programs and uh, we're now working closely together on a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. We have done for the last six months. Um, so yeah, that sums it up essentially, you know, I help people start and scale their own agencies Alongside that, I also run my own agency business I have done for the last three years. Um, my approach is different to most. I mean, most people very much speak about the cold calling, cold email approach, um, again, cold outreach, essentially. My focus um, has always been built from uh, warmer outreach methods, so leveraging freelance websites, recruitment sites. There's also ways that you can leverage LinkedIn by getting clients who are actually interested and looking for help. So as someone who was introverted naturally my whole life, that's how I got my first start, started make my, uh, making my first money online. And it soon transitioned into, there was a lot of demand for other people who were looking to get clients, but struggling with the cold calling aspect. Um, there was a massive demand for that. So I started helping people. And then, you know, over the last three years now, I've been able to help thousands of people, you know, start their own agencies. And I also built a training business alongside my own, uh, my own social media agency as well. So yeah, essentially it's, I run a marketing business day to day, have a team that take care of that. And then uh, my main focus right now is my training company where I help people achieve that same thing. Yeah. Exciting stuff, man. And I would see like a lot of you guys have probably found me through Brad and like I've gone through all of his programs. And like you said, we're in a six month mentorship at the moment. So definitely mm -hmm. recommend everything that he has going on. But aside from all that, I mean, one thing I connected with, with you on early when I initially found you was kind of like your story, your upbringing, like where you came from and like how you uh -huh. kind of came through a good amount of adversity to get to where you are today. So I mean, do you want to touch on that for people? Like essentially what's your story and what would you sure. say your journey has been like from where you are when you were starting out with all this to, you know, sure. to where you are today? Yeah, of course, man. I mean, I've done like massive 30, 40 minute videos on this process on my channel. So like I'll try and like dilute it down to like a brief overview, but sure. um, essentially growing up, I was always very, um, like I was always bullied, right? I was overweight, massive introvert, video game addiction, didn't have a bunch of friends. I was that guy, right? I was the, the fat kid in class that, that got bullied essentially, right? Um, always had a loving family, but again, never came from any financial background. No one in my family had ever gone to university. None of my family members ever had a business. Very working class background, um, you know, struggled my whole life financially. Then got a little bit older, went to college. Um, as society tells you, I went the normal route. So I went to college, went to university, started studying at university. And at this point, all my whole life wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I was under the mindset, you have to have capital or you have to have money to invest to start a company. So it was in the distant, like the, the distant view of like, I want to start a business, but it just didn't seem realistic. So I went to university to get a normal job and I, I was hating it, right? I did business, was learning nothing about how to start a business, then did accounting and realized that was 10 times worse. So dropped out of business studies to do accounting. And then it was at this point, I was like, look, I'm so miserable. Okay. I'm normally such a happy, upbeat person, but I am miserable in this. At the time as well, I was working a minimum wage job, stacking shelves at a place called Co-op here in the UK. Um, and whilst I was in my second course at uni, I was still working. I was actually in my overdraft, right? So I was in debt by 1,500 pounds. Um, I pretty much maxed out my overdraft. And I was, at the time, I was so depressed and just literally miserable with, with my lifestyle. And I was like, I always want to start a business, but like, what is actually stopping me? Like, why don't I start an online business? So I started to research, right? I started to look at 
right, what, what can I do to make money online? So I, I actually, before I started to research, I, I got out a notepad and wrote down all the things I could offer. So I was like, well, I know how to edit videos. So I was like, video editing. I know how to post on social media. And there's a big long list of different things that I could do, right? Basic understanding of photography and all this. So I wrote it all down. And then I realized, okay, is there anything in here I can make money with? So I started to Google how to make money on social media. And that's when I stumbled onto um, social media marketing, right? Then typical teaching everybody, oh, you know, you need to cold call. You need, and this is back when the SMA industry was like first starting, right? This was even before Ty Lopez has released his course. Yeah. Um, and this was like very basic into it. And everyone was talking about going door to door to get clients. And as mentioned, as I said before, grew up massive introvert, no confidence whatsoever. I was stuck, couldn't get any, any clients. So it wasn't until then I stumbled upon a freelance website called Upwork. And I, my first belief was like, okay, cool. I can get jobs on this platform. And I was like, you know what? Everyone else has got experience. I don't, I'm not going to apply. And my fiance said to me, and this transformed my life. Okay. And this is part of why I do what I do now to be able to almost be this push for other people. But my fiance said to me, Brad, I hate seeing you like this. Just apply to the jobs. What's the worst that can happen? Within 24 hours, I had my first client. And literally when I was making 700 bucks a month, so I landed two clients. One was uh, 500 bucks a month. Well, they were both for 500 bucks a month, but after fees on Upwork, I was making about 700 bucks a month uh, take home. Mm -hmm. And I quit my job and I dropped out of university. And then the rest is history. I scaled my agency up pretty quickly at that point to a few thousand pound a month, made way more money than I ever had done before. And then yeah, scaled up to six figures. And after that, um, started doing the training stuff when I realized there was a massive demand for, for this as well. So that's kind of the watered down version. But yeah, to sum it up, that was essentially my journey so far in entrepreneurship. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I think right there, I think a lot of people can pull a lot of value from that just by hearing the story. Because I think a lot of times it's easy for people just to look at people like you or other people on social media and think that you were always in the position that you are today, but what they don't realize. And again, you do a very good job at talking about this through your socials and older videos mm -hmm. and things like that. But they don't actually realize like, the process that someone's gone through to get there. And they don't realize that, you know, if someone else can do it, they can also do it as well. I think, yeah, thank for you sure. for highlighting that. No, for sure. I mean, now people also don't understand the sacrifices, right? Yeah. Like people, people don't understand that like I have been obsessed for four years. Like before I even started my business, I mean, I've got this bookshelf here, right? I mean, this, it doesn't look like it holds too much, but there are literally hundreds of books there. And I've read most of them cover to cover. I've listened, there was a stage and you the whole Ty Lopez read a book a day thing. I was literally reading, not, not flicking through, not Tim Ferriss speed reading. I was reading cover to cover every day, a full book. Whilst I was working a full-time job, I was, had another YouTube at the channel at the time because I just was so desperate. Right? I was like, can I become a YouTuber and make money? I was making YouTube videos. I was uploading three videos a day on top of being a uni student and working full time. And I was reading a book a day. And that almost doesn't seem possible for some people. Right. But I was literally obsessed and I would do nothing but to make it work, you know? So it's like, yeah, people don't see like, you know, that there has been a journey. They look at now and they see, oh, this is what you're doing. You have an agency, you do this. It must have always been like that. No, like the person I am today is a person that I've crafted and I'm still at the beginning of my journey, right? I've still got right. so much further to go, but right. I've tried, you know, that everything that I've have is because I've worked so hard to get it. And, you know, when, I'm, when, you know, for example, and I'm meditating or I'm reading business books or I'm speaking to clients or I'm, right. you know what I mean? Like they, that, that's, that's the difference, you know? So, um, it's a, it's a transition, but it's a transition that I've made through choice. Um, and I'm super glad I have. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah. I think it's really important for people to hear that. And I think that also kind of flows into one of the next thoughts I have. So kind of what you were saying in terms of like what you spend your time doing, making those sacrifices and doing things that would put you ahead in the future versus like other people around you, maybe that were making like more short term decisions. I mean, do I'm like, even now I think with this quarantine going on, it's really important. I think to highlight, and I've done this in other previous interviews as well, but like, what are the things you're focusing on and doing now? Um, that are put that are putting you ahead versus like a lot of people are using this quarantine as a period to like play video games and and watch sure. Netflix and things like that, which can be great at times. But like at the same time, for people like you and me, it's a golden opportunity to chase after and get closer to our goals. So do you want to touch mm -hmm. on that briefly? And then also maybe that kind of flows into also like you know what does your day to day look like currently and you know in general? Yeah, for sure. So th this is the thing, right? It's like I think every when people first start to get success, okay, and like when I say success, for me, I mean, it's a very minimal level of success. For me, I'm, when I say success, bear in mind, this is, I am someone who 
no one in my family has ever made more than a couple thousand a month. Okay. Like I come from like, you know, from no, no money. Right. So for me to be able to be making like three, four grand a month for me, I thought I was like the richest person on the planet. Like no joke. I, and I, everyone goes through that stage of like thinking initially like, Oh, they've, they've got this money and they think they're super successful. And like, you know, I'm, I'm going to start spending my money on this and do this. And luckily for me, that was like, I've never been a lavish person. I've not bought a bunch of stupid stuff, but I was spending a bit too much money on holidays that I probably couldn't really afford and doing, doing all this stuff. And then you soon start to realize that actually like all of that stuff that you're doing is literally for nothing. It's like what you're spending money to impress people that like don't even know who you are or like you or care about you. And most of the time they think that it's your parents' money anyway. It's like just so stupid. Okay. And luckily I didn't go through any extreme of it. Like I never bought a, a fat, like massive car. I don't live in a lavish house, any of that stuff, but it's because I learned this uh, soon on. So what I do is like, I don't spend my money, like every single penny that I make, like I didn't pay myself a salary last month, just to put that into perspective. I have an agency and a training business, both of which that I think are fairly successful. I didn't pay myself a salary last month. And why is that? It's because I invest every penny back into my company. All the money that I do pay myself for the most part is a minimal amount to cover my bills and every other penny I'm, is going to, into investments. So the difference is, is like, for me is I don't have anything in my life other than things that take me to the next level. So for me, there's t two most imp important things in my life. There's my business and there's my family and like my fiance, my cats and stuff, right? Now, my business, I'm going to be able to get better results if I'm healthy, if I'm active, if I'm, you know, if I'm tracking my sleep, if I'm, you know, if I'm making sure that I'm um, massively focused, if I make sure I'm not eating a bunch of bad food, like that's all stuff that I'm doing. So when I talk about business, I'm also talking about like trying to operate on a peak level, right? So, and then I've also got my family. So if anything doesn't fit into those two things, then I'm not doing it. It's simple as. So if like playing the Xbox, does that help me get better business results? No. Does that allow me to be with my fiance? No. So then I'm not going to do it. So that's, that's the thing. It's like, I don't do <clears throat> so, um, there's so many things that I, I don't, I don't do in my day to day. So everything I do is optimized for my business or for my family life. It's as simple as that. I think a lot of people can pull a lot of value out of that in terms of like your routines, eliminating distractions and all that. I know that I've spoken about this before on my channel, but the recommendation you made to me to get a safe and have it locked in, um, have my phone locked in the safe while working, that's been, you know, monumental for me in terms of like increasing my, increasing my output, increasing my productivity mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah, no, I totally agree with all those points. Um, on that as well, I know we were speaking about this before we started recording, but um, what do you think like you would do in the beginning if you were trying to start building what you built again? Like what are the initial few steps you would start taking to start building some momentum? Because I know a lot of people struggle with you know, taking that first step or getting the, the first client and building that initial momentum. So I was just uh -huh. curious, like if you can go back and you can build that momentum, knowing what you know today, like how would you go about tackling that? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, if we're talking, I think people often overcomplicate it. It's super basic answer, but it's, you just need to get like, if, you know, for me, like I teach a lot of freelance website stuff. So if I wanted to get a client fast, easy, start again tomorrow, I had nothing. I would set up a freelance profile and I would do this in a day. And I guarantee I'd have my first client within a week, okay, with no experience. And what I would do is I'd set up a freelance profile. If I had no experience, what I would do is I would go um, and research other freelancers. And what you can do, you can go to a little toggle setting and you can refine by the highest earners with the highest success score. So I'd go and I'd look at everyone. I'd be like, okay, cool. What are the most successful people on this platform doing? What is their bio? What hourly rate are they? What have they got in their portfolio? How, what have they got under education? Like, what are they doing? All right. I would see what they're doing and I would not copy it, but I would model something that's related to me and again, my offerings and I'll build out my profile. Even if I don't have a bunch of experience, I'd build it out. Then what I would do is, because I haven't got any experience right now, right? So what I would do is I'd go to my phone or online. I'd create a bunch of social media profiles. I'd get some stock images. I'd go on Canva, whack up some design stuff. Maybe I'd even pay a designer, get some stuff created and put together almost a makeshift portfolio. And I'm not promising these are previous client results. I'm just saying, look, here's what I can do. So it's, it's a showcase of what I can do, not what I've done. And I'll put that on my profile and I'd build it all out. And that would take me about a day. Okay. Then what I would do is I would start doing outreach. I'd search for jobs and I would apply to them and I would do as much as I humanly can. I'm not going to build out a website yet. I'm not going to care about what my business name is. I'm not going to care about any of that stuff right now. I'm Brad Riley on a freelance pro uh, website and I'm going to literally from the second I get up 
to the second I go to bed, I'm going to hit as much outreach as I can. Okay. And, you know, I have people message me saying, I've not landed any clients. And I'll say, well, cool. How many outreach you done? It's like, oh, seven today. Well, that's, that's why well, I've done five today total. Like, you, you know, like when I first started and I was doing outreach, I was doing as much as I can. I was staying up super late. And I, like now I know what I know. I wouldn't be like screwing with your sleep schedule and stuff. But anyway, the point is, is do as much as you can and focus purely on the outreach. And then really important is you want to track your numbers. Mm. I, um, in the, the training programs, I offer, I have what I call the conversion calendar, which is essentially a Google sheet where you track the outreach you do, the responses you get, the meetings you set, and then the closes you have. So you, tr- you can track all the data. You track all the numbers, right? So you know, if you're sent like, let's say you've sent out 2000 uh, messages and you've got like 10 responses. Well, the issue is in the front end. Like the issue is that there's something with your profile, with the cover letter, your hourly rate's too high. Like there's an issue on the front end. But if you've got a 10, 15% response rate, you've got a bunch of messages and you've had like 10 meetings, but no clients closed. Well, the issues in the meeting, maybe it's your sales process. Maybe you need to role play with it. So I would then just, Follow that whole system, do the outreach, set up my profile, do it, but track all of my outreach and then look at the numbers and then make decisions based off of that data. And if the data tells me my sales is bad, I'll make adjustments. If the data tells me my front end's bad, I'll make adjustments to my profile. I'll lower my hourly rate. I'll change up some stuff there. Yeah. If the numbers tell me that I'm getting a good response rate, I'm closing a good amount of meetings, but I'm not actually getting very many meetings set from the responses I have. Maybe I need to push harder for the meeting. Maybe I need to respond quicker. Okay, so I'll always make data-driven decisions based off of those numbers, and I would repeat. Everything else, the, all the authority building stuff, that can come afterwards. Real simple, if you want to close a client, if you follow those steps, you can get to six figures just literally following that advice I've given you. And people overcomplicate it. It's like, it doesn't have to be difficult. Just keep it simple. 100%, yeah. That's super, super valuable. Like, I think anyone that's listening, you can literally scale with that model right there. And that's essentially kind of what I did once I start listening to Brad's advice. Because for a year before I met Brad and before I came across his content, I was actually struggling with some of the methods he talked about before, like cold calling and door to door. But then actually when I started implementing the freelance strategies, that's when I actually started getting results from my agency. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think literally kind of like to lead into the next question as well, what would you say? So obviously now you have like the training business and you have the agency, which are both super successful, but what would you say differentiates you and separates you from let's say someone who doesn't actually, you know, achieve the results they want in business or, you know, really in any area of their life? Sure. I mean, so there's, I would say there's two aspects, right? I think, there's a beginner point of view. And then there's like, once you've actually got those clients, how do you keep them and how do you sustain your business? So there's like the aspect from getting and there's the aspect from sustaining. The aspect of getting, it was my pure obsession. Like nothing is going to get in my way to make this work. Like I've always been the type of person and it's just actually so, like I was watching an interview with uh, Jeff Bezos and it's, he speaks about this and I was like, like this is so accurate, right? And this is like the most, this is the richest man on the planet talking. So if he teaches you something about entrepreneurship, you better listen. Mm-hmm. Um, but he says like when he's out in a restaurant, he's like thinking like, how can this restaurant be better? Like what's his doing? He's an entrepreneur, right? And I've always had that in my, in my blood. Like I've always, like at school, I used to um, sell chewing gums. I used to buy a pack for like 40p and I would sell them to people for 20p a gum. And it's not much, but I've always had that like entrepreneurial spirit in me. So when I first started my business, it was like, there's like, I, I cannot go and work a job. Like people say, Oh, I don't want to work a job. I hate my job. Well, if you hate it so much, use that pain and do not stop until you get a client. And in the beginning that led to me working on a bunch of stupid stuff. And I was like hustling around like a busy idiot. Cause I didn't know better back then. But the point was, is that obsession to make it work. And I was not going to, even if I was working on a bunch of wrong things back then, I only had to make a couple right decisions to allow me to quit my job. And that's what I did. And then one, mm-hmm. I'm not recommending people do this, but The obsession was so much that as soon as I landed my first client and my second client followed, I was like, I never, I didn't know if they were going to stay month two. I do nothing. I had no experience, no results. And I was like, I'm quitting. If I can get, if I can earn 700 bucks in one month, I can earn enough to sustain my lifestyle. I can do this. And I was obsessed. So number one, like initially it's like, you need to be obsessed. You need to let nothing stop you. But if you have a mentor and a guide that can help you work on the right things, you can achieve a lot more, a lot quicker than I did, you know, rather than, you know, like we've, I've had people now who've scaled to 10 K in 30 days because they've used that same philosophy, but they've actually had the right guidance. So that's, that's number one. And then once you've had a bit of success, you've got some clients. The second thing is to actually sustain that. And then like scale is to actually really care. And I actually think this kind of comes, but I don't know if you can train this. I mean, I think it just comes down to being a good human being personally, 
But like one thing that I know that helps me stand out, and I can say this from the bottom of my heart, is like I care so much about helping my customers. Like to the point where it's like I like I said, I didn't pay myself last month. I do not care about money. I just truly want to help people. And I think if you solve a problem, if you can help people, if you can get, provide fantastic customer service, that's how you're going to scale. There's going to be people that make more money in the short term, okay, by doing stupid stuff, by like making some bad decisions, but they get a bit lucky. But they're not going to sustain that over the long term unless you truly care and have fantastic customer service. Um, a fact, you know, if you're offering social media services, having fantastic results, stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I would say the two aspects are depending on where you are in your business. 100%. So basically what you're saying is, with that hunger and pure drive and the willingness, if you want it so bad, and I can kind of relate to this, you know that you're going to figure it out and at least in the front end you can land the clients. But then if you yeah. actually want to build a long-term sustainable business and actually sustain it and grow month over month, you need to actually care yeah. about your customers, your clients, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, that's backed up by like, you need experience, you need to learn, continually educate. But like, if we're talking two main things, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Cause if you care enough, you care enough to learn to make the results good. Right. So I think it stems right. from ultimately caring. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree. So, Lately, obviously, we've been having like some uh, some conversations around like health and biohacking, and obviously, we both have the the aura ring now. But mm -hmm. um, so, I'm just curious, like on your end, what makes you see value in this for yourself? Like, do you see actual business benefit to investing in your health and investing mm -hmm. into your your biohacking and stuff like that? And then also, do you recommend that to people that are maybe just getting started out as a beginner? Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, I think, I mean, I that well, so from a perspective of like, if you want to have clarity if you like so you cannot if you're if you've got brain fog right so like if you're going out drinking all the time mm -hmm. you're basically borrowing energy away from tomorrow okay which means to a certain degree it's no less of a distraction than your phone so if i'm saying stop your phone well i shouldn't i'm also saying stop alcohol you know for example right because what's that going to do it's going to give you brain fog and you're not going to have clarity so like there's things that make you have like less clarity and become less creative and be less focused but there's also things that can multiply like your current focus, right? Which is the meditation, which is, you know, make it like cold showers, for example. Like if you, if you ever like struggle waking up in the morning because you're drowsy for 30 minutes, I promise you have a cold shower for 60 seconds in the morning. You've saved yourself 30 minutes because you are awake. I promise you after that. And so there's little things you can do. There's little hacks you can do, right? Um, tracking your sleep and with the aura ring and making sure you're getting good quality of sleep again it's not just the amount you sleep it's a good quality so is there value in it yes 100 percent helps you focus more um i'm so i'm so much more creative when i'm operating as a healthy human being like when i've got good food in my body when i'm not constantly got bunch of inflammation when i'm not um when i'm healthy and i'm working out and i'm getting my steps in and i'm sleeping well i come up with way better ideas I come up with way better things to innovate within my business. Is that, is that luck? Is that coincidence? Or is that actually just because I'm, is I'm taking care of myself and therefore right. I'm able to operate at a better level? It's definitely the latter, right? You look at anyone like truly successful as well. And then of course, there's easy for people to turn around and say, ah, oh, but there's some billionaires that are fat and stuff and they're billionaires that are this and that. Yes, and that's true. Okay, there is. But if you look at the vast majority of people, most people who operate at a crazy level, they do a bunch of stuff. Like this isn't necessarily biohacking, but like Mark Zuckerberg wears the same stuff every day. So he doesn't have to make any, use any of, any of his willpower to make decisions. Like, I mean, that's almost a biohacking to a certain degree. He's hacking his lifestyle to make sure he can go all in on Facebook right. and he's a billionaire, right? I mean, I'm going to listen to him. Um, so yeah, biohacking and like health and stuff like that, super important. Is it important for beginners? Now this may be a little bit controversial. I mean, I'm going to say it is, but I don't think you have to go to the extent as like someone like I would or, or you would because it may take away time from important stuff. Like if you work a full-time job and you, you've got 18 hours in a day, Take away two hours for buffer for just wasted time. You've got 16 hours left. You work an eight-hour job, hour commute either side, 10. If I've done my maths right, you've got six hours left in a day. Now, if I then tell you to spend an hour at the gym, work out and healthy, which you should be doing, regardless if you start a business or not, like that's, you know, yeah. you've got five hours left. And now I'm going to tell you to spend like an hour and a half biohacking, and then you've got three and a bit hours left for your work. I'm going to say certain things that you could do to go the extra mile you may not necessarily need to do in the beginning like that times maybe better focus on your business because then when you do start your business and you've got all day to focus on it all of a sudden that hour and that time is better used there so it's like yeah. I, in in that respect i would say focus on like 
keep it simple and focus on what's going to get you the highest value, which is just real simple. It's like work out, sleep well. You don't need an aura ring to begin with. Like just sleep well, get a good circadian rhythm together, go to the bed at the same time every night, wake up the same time. Don't drink a bunch of alcohol, cut sugar down a little bit. Like, you know, like stuff like that and keep it real basic and follow the simple stuff, get that right. And then you can tap in more to the real like next level biohacking stuff. Once you are wanting to go to six figures or beyond, you know, and you've already got a business running. That's, that's my opinion on it at least. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think I would agree with that too. Like if you're in a position, obviously where you only have, let's say you have $300 to invest in yourself and it's between the aura ring and, and, you know, putting that money into connects or hiring a virtual assistant, you're much better off investing in the connects or the VA. And then yeah. two, three months down the road, when you recoup that money and you're, you know, very much in the profit on that, then you could take that extra money and reinvest it. I also yeah. agree. It's like, I think top priority. And I think a lot of people can increase their lifestyle a lot, especially if they're working a lot or they have a long commute by starting to work on their own schedule. Because again, when you're working from home and you're on your own schedule, yeah, sure. You're going to still want to work a lot and put a lot into your business, probably more than you would at your job, but also mm-hmm. you have a bit more like freedom and flexibility within your day to day. If you want yeah. to take 30 minutes to invest into your health or something like that, you have the ability to do so. Oh, and also it's like when you're not working that eight hour job, eight hours at a job or 10 hours, you can take 30 minutes from Netflix or your Xbox right. to, to do your biohacking stuff. Cause it's more important. You right. know, it doesn't necessarily come off your work day at that point, but when, when it comes off your work day, because you're already working a job, that's when I'm like, it's debatable because you're multiplying, right. like it's almost a multiplier, right? It multiplies yeah. like what you're already doing, but if you're not doing much cause you don't have time cause you're working a full time job, then it's not multiplying much of anything. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I would say if it's, if you've already got a business and you, you've got, you know, you're taking that time away from Xbox or Netflix to sure. do biohacking, it definitely makes sense, but less so when you, when you've got no other time. Yeah, that makes sense. So obviously like you used to travel a bunch and you still do, but I guess yeah. what's your take kind of like on traveling and what was kind of like your transition with it where at least from my perspective, it seems like let's say one, two, three years ago, you were a lot more focused on traveling and now you're just more focused on like your mission. What's like your transition like with that been? And also like, what do you realize that you think could be valuable to other people? Yeah, for sure. So I love traveling. I th- like traveling is my favorite thing to do. And like I said, I've got two core missions, right? Well, one mission, but like, obviously like my, my two core values really is like my business and then my family. Mm-hmm. Now travel for me falls very much under my family because I'm, I'm traveling with my fiance. I'm creating fantastic memories that we're going to take to the grave. Like those are moments, especially when it's just me and her, there's no one else. We're in Australia. We're, like I'm creating memories with the person that is most important to me in my life. Right. So for me, that is so precious and valuable. However, it, you can get to, it it doesn't, it's not, it's fun and it's fantastic, but there's also limits to it because as someone who's so obsessed with my business, it's like, I'm very an all or nothing type of person. So if I'm traveling, I'm traveling and I'm not necessarily going to be working. If I'm, my focus is split, I'm not doing either. I'm not really enjoying traveling and I'm not really making progress in my business. So it's like, when I travel, I travel and I'm with my fiance and I do the work that I have to do. But for the most part, I'm taking care of that aspect of my life. I'm creating memories and with my family, right? However, when I'm not traveling, I'm with, I'm in, all in on the business. Mm-hmm. So it's like, for me now, it's like, if I do go traveling, that is at the sacrifice of my business. Mm-hmm. So I don't like to travel necessarily as much as I did a few years ago, because at this point now I'm really trying to build up my business. Um, I'll still probably go on four to six. I mean, not right now because we're in lockdown, right? Um, after this, I certainly will be going on a nice trip away, but I'll normally go on like maybe four, maybe four trips abroad a year, maybe six. It depends really. Yeah. I mean, you can have a little weekend away here in Amsterdam. It takes an hour to get there. I mean, it's a, it depends yeah. if you class that as a trip. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's really great. It's like, I would, I recommend it. It's amazing. What I will say is the laptop lifestyle was massively overrated it's actually not even that great because it's like, like I said, you, you're not what you like, you can't really enjoy either. You're like half work and half there. It's like, it's not all, all great. So for me personally, um, I love travel. I love doing it. I, I don't like to travel as much as I did before because I, that time takes time away from my business, which mm-hmm. I'm trying to heavily grow. But saying that it can be good downtime, right? It's like, if you've got a partner or family and you want to travel with them, go and travel with them. Enjoy it. Take a break from work. Like every year I'll go on like a, it's normally about January time. And sometimes I'll do this even multiple times a year, but normally around January time, um, I'll go to a log cabin, no phone, no internet connection. It's the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I'll order in a bunch of food shop and we'll sit there and there's nothing, no distractions, Mm. nothing. I don't look at my phone. She doesn't look at her phone. We don't look at, we don't connect to the internet because we can't, we don't put the telly on. Mm. 
I just read and I spend time with her, right? So it's like, that's super important. Um, less so traveling and it's good from a break perspective, but yeah, in terms of like growing your business, I would say the laptop lifestyle is overrated. Um, I'd, I'd much rather have a fantastic business and then pick and choose when I travel throughout the year than like constantly do it alongside my business personally. Yeah, that makes sense actually. And I think it's one of those things probably where like, and I've experienced this a little bit for myself, like the grass is always greener on the other side. And like, I think yeah. people really crave to be able to do that. And it's really ambitious. And I think that's a great thing to want to do and to be able to do. But that's like when you get there and you realize it's probably not the best way to structure things. Um, well, well, also, I think what, what it really is, is people would love the ability to do that. And when they can do it, they realize actually it's not that cool. Yeah. Like, the, the fact that I could, well, I can't because of bloody COVID, but in theory, outside of COVID, I could get on a plane tomorrow and go somewhere. Yeah. That is, that is what you want. What you don't want is to actually be there doing the work on your laptop, hmm. see the cool picture with a guy on a laptop. The, the pictures of the guys on the laptop on the beach He's not working on the beach. I promise you. He's just said, take a quick, he said to his person, like, take a quick photo of me. Like it's, it's for show ultimately for the most part. Right. Cause yeah. it looks cool for Instagram. It's not, it's not realistic, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say it's fantastic, but the ability to be able to do that's better than actually, um, doing it. But by all means, but then I have different goals, right? This is talking from someone who wants to build a, a nine figure company, you know, who yeah. wants to build an, a massive impactful business. If you want to, literally travel full time, well then maybe you do want to do that. But yeah. for me, I don't, I mean, that's why everyone's different. Right. And that's not, doesn't mean I'm right. It just means that that's what, uh, what's right for me. Yeah. Um, good point. Yeah. No, I agree. Com- completely. Good point. Um, so one of the last questions I have for you here is just, obviously everyone now might see like Bradley Riley, that's a highly successful agency, BR media and all the things you have going on today. But along the journey, what would you say was one of like the, the more low points, like the lowest point in your journey where maybe you felt like discouraged and maybe you thought about giving mm-hmm. up or, or something like that? Yeah. During that process of building my business, do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really great maybe question. Also, I'm sorry to cut you off. Maybe even also like pre-agency and all that, maybe when you're doing the vlogs or like trying out other things before that, if you want, maybe it happened then as well. Like that would be. Yeah, it. sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, what, I mean, now there's lots of lows, right? There's, I mean, it's, you can't see putting out fires. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's so many. So prior to, prior to the business, I would say, um, I mean, yeah, the, the, the low for me was probably obviously just getting bullied in my upbringing, but at the same time that shapes who you are. Right. right. Um, so there's, there's that aspect then during, during the business, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's so many different mistakes. I mean, it's hard to know a specific low point, to be honest. I'm really trying to, I mean, I've worked with my fair share of nightmare clients, but this is the thing, right? It's like, I don't see any of it as a low and I don't have a specific there's been nothing in my business that's ever, there's been no time where I've turned around and thought I'm going to quit and stop mm. doing this. And the reason for that is because I have a bigger mission in mind. Mm. Um, you know, like, and, and that keeps me going. I mean, I mean, one thing that had happened, which was obviously super, I suppose this is a massive low point about this. And I'll tell you what, this is actually really, this is crazy. Actually. Now I say this. So I was like massively close to my, to my nan. Right. And unfortunately my nan passed away and this is about, uh, probably like nine months into starting my company. Mm-hmm. Now I'd book, now this is how crazy this is. Okay. I'd booked a trip to go to Australia for anyone who knows about how I got started or knows, watch my stuff. I basically got my start and, you know, became friends with some of the bigger names in the space right now. And that's how initially I did collaboration, built up my channel and it's get snowballed from there. People started to ask things about, hang on, what's up work? I don't have to cold call. And then that's literally how my whole train of business is built. Mm-hmm. But I booked that trip probably, about I literally about a day before I found out that my nan was going to pass away and I had to make a decision, which is I knew my nan was going to pass away. Right. But I also knew that this here was a huge opportunity. And if I didn't go on it, like I would be stupid. And I said to myself, okay, my nan, um, my, my nan unfortunately did pass away. Right. So she passed away at this point. So it wasn't like, Oh, she may pass away whilst I was gone. So she'd already passed away. Um, so by the time I actually come to going on the trip, but I, knew, I said to myself, I was like, my nan would want me to go and do this. Like, I need to go and do it. And I made the decision to go. And I went to Australia. It was, I was at the lowest point of my life, okay? I'd never, bear in mind, I'd not lost anyone properly close to me my whole life. So it was my first time really experiencing something like, like that. I lost in the family. And it was horrendous. And then, like, a few, like, within a few days, I was on a plane to Australia. And part of me felt like, I feel like I shouldn't do this. Like, I know I need to for myself. But part of me was like but my, you know, this happened and I went and that has transitioned into everything I have today. Mm-hmm. And I know she would be so proud of me because of it. So it's like, it's almost the big negative, which turned into a big positive. And the crazy thing is, it's like, I literally, whilst she was, um, 
uh, like literally like on her deathbed, bless her. She literally said to one of the nurses, this is my, my grandson Bradley. He's going to be a millionaire one day, all this stuff. Right. And the crazy thing is, is this going on that trip has ignited the business, which is likely going to be my first seven figure company. Mm. So, you know, it's like, I know I've made a proud doing so. So that's a big low point that wasn't necessarily business related, but I had to make a decision. What was like, and now I'm so grateful I made the right decision, but that was like a massive low point, which ended up in a, um, ended up building everything that I have today and impacting the lives I have is a reason we're on this phone call. Cause I went on that trip, right? It's like, yeah. So it stemmed from that. So that was a low point, but something obviously positive came from it. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I really love that story. And also I, I love this interview as well. Cause I think there's a lot of things in here that like, even for me, like obviously we've known each other for a while, but there's things that I'm even hearing that are like new stories to me or like new perspective, which I think is helpful. And I think also will like help anyone that sees this, but yeah, I just want to touch on that, even like the perspective of like looking at things that are bad and then seeing that more as a good thing. So it's one thing, even every time I speak to you, like if there's ever an issue, it's like you always put it into perspective of like, you know, even with all this quarantine stuff, it's like, let's say someone loses a client or two, there's a business out there that has a hundred thousand, a million a month in overhead that can't even open for the next three months. So it's like, yeah, you put things into perspective. It always just makes it look a, like a bit more doable. I think that's yeah. one thing I've kind of learned from you recently as well, especially with everything kind of going mm -hmm. on in the world, although it hasn't really necessarily affected too much for either of us. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think it's funny. There's a lot yeah, of things welcome. in here, like I said, that I didn't even know about you going into this, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I haven't shared, right? Like I've never shared, I've never said that to anybody before, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I've never, never mentioned that on one of my YouTube videos, but it's like, um, I think it is an important lesson, right? And, uh, yeah. you know, it's a good, good interview because yeah, I mean, you have to ask the right questions to get that out. Right. So, so, <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. Um, cool. So, I mean, in terms of like just wrapping up here, I mean, is there anything, if you could leave people off with something, you know, like, what would that be? And then obviously, you know, like I'll put all the links to your channel and all that in the description, but if you want to plug anything that you have coming out, like your book or anything like that, sure. just you know, let us know. Yeah. I mean, just on a final note, I mean, we've touched on a bunch of stuff, right? Yep. Um, final note, this is just honestly like, just be a good human being, please. Like so many, I see so many negative people and stuff. And like, just focus, like pick something, focus on it and just become like the best at that thing. And along the way, just like be abundant. It's like, yeah. the big thing is like, my big thing is like community over competition, right? Like I see all these people like trying to be in competition with other people and like, oh, I can't help you because that means that's taken away from me. Like just be abundant. There's so much in the world. Like be abundant, be a good human being, help people get clients. Like, I mean, you've done it before in the group, right? Where you've literally... You took, you had a client that was going to be like, I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks a month, which isn't worth it for you. So you literally gave that client to someone in the group. Like you could just be like, I'm not going to give that to someone else. Cause that's my competition. It's another agency owner. Or you could just be abundant because good things come to people who help others who do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many lessons that stem off of that in a business perspective from like customer service to delivering a great product and, and all sorts. Right. But I'll just leave it at that. Like be abundant, do the right thing believe in community over competition. There's enough to go around to help people. Right. Um, and then yeah, to, to wrap up again, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I'll leave all the links to, to Brad's stuff below. I do highly recommend the group as well. Like Brad said, I'm in there coaching people, answering questions as much as I can. And also I've met, you know, a lot of my good friends in there as well. I think it's a really great community and I think things are just getting started with it in comparison to, you know, to where it will be by the end of the year and, you know, mm -hmm. going forward beyond that. So I'll drop all the links below. Also recently, Brad's been doing daily uploads to YouTube. So there's definitely a lot of value that um, you'll even see me engaging there as well. So definitely check out his YouTube. But like I said, I'll have all the links below. Once again, thanks for coming on, Brad. Thank, Thank you guys for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Okay, so there we have it. I hope you found a bunch of value in this video. As mentioned, if you're interested in joining the Marketing Agency Mentorship Program, the link is in the description. And if you did enjoy that video, why don't you watch this video right here? This is the video of a different dynamic. This is where I'm actually interviewing Michael on how he's closed over 50 to 60 clients for his agency over the last few years. So I highly recommend to watch. Go and check that out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.